do the wiring harness for the wings and here what's important and what I like to highlight is when I do the wiring harness for my wings I like to make sure that I keep the servo connectors right underneath the hatch what I mean by that is when you design your harness I prefer to not make it such that I pull the servo connector all the way through and have the servo connector you know meet uh, or mate to uh, the servo connector right there because when you have to pull this out that means you have to pull the whole thing out so what I prefer to do is coil up this wire in the pocket and so for that reason I have uh, two wires here that are gonna be used for the harness so the first one you can see uh, this red black and white is long enough and it's going from all the way in the servo pocket all the way to the edge of the wing um, all the way to right here and then we have the extension that we'll add on to and then a different color for the flap servo same idea it goes from the pocket right here you can see that all the way to you know beyond the wing so this way if I need to replace a servo all I need to do is pull out the pocket covers and replace it second part to this which I'll show later is my AR connectors so these are the guys I'm gonna use um, as the wing connectors it has got a lot more uh, positions or connectors than I need I just need six but I'm contemplating adding lights to this model later so uh, this is what I had lying around that would allow for me to to do that next thing is I make my uh, harnesses myself which means you buy the pins and you buy the crimping tool and we just cut everything to length and make our own harness. Okay, so uh, wires in, and as you can see, I'm having clamp secure it so that it doesn't pull out at the end. Now I'm gonna attach my air connector, and that harness is gonna be pretty much complete. So here's the uh, finished product from the wing side. Uh, you can see that uh, snake skin just protect this from chafing, and obviously this can all get stowed inside the wing if it needs to, so now I'm gonna go and put the mating connector on the fuselage. So we can see where I plan to put the connector and the air connectors, these guys come with a mounting plate and it just goes in like that. And you can see those ears, uh, uh, mounting ears there, allow it to stay on this. And then this is what we use to mount it onto the fuselage. So we have our connector mounted and as you can see, it's very uh, much recessed into the fuselage um, and that's a good thing because there's a quite a bit of wood behind this section and so now um, I'm very happy with this because it just allows the wing to fit in really well so if we look uh, underneath we'll see the the gray snake skin under there and that gets routed underneath all of the um, the woodwork uh, and you can see right there so that's it comes all the way from underneath there and it's nicely hidden um, and comes up all the way to the front here um, and is labeled with flap and ailerons. So the so, wiring is coming along pretty well. So far I have wired um, both harnesses for gear and brakes, both sides of the wing, as well as the aileron and flaps and you can see those wires here and they're labeled. 
Um, I'd like to make note of the fact that these wires all have a lot of chafing protection. So you can see that spiral wrap there, and you can see underneath they all have um, either spiral wrap or snake skin throughout. And that's because, again, um, the former work here is very sharp, has got very sharp edges. So Next here is the wiring harness for the tail, uh, so the elevator surfaces and the rudder, and it's going through the same process here. So snake skin all the way through, uh, sort of to the back there. Um, and remember, uh, I have this pulled out. We want to make sure that the servo lead stays pretty much in here, because if I ever want to replace the servo, I don't want to have to go fishing through the fuselage for that wire. I want it to be right here. So this is the reason why um, I have my harness being nice and long and actually meeting uh, the connection point right here for the rudder and right there for the elevator. Situation at the tail, you can see that I added this clip and again here's the harness that comes all the way from the front of the jet and you can see that it's been uh, wire wrapped in that spiral wrap just for chafe protection and then like I said before uh, that whole connection comes into this spot and as you can see I just uh, coiled up my servo wire so all that needs to change if the servo is busted or needs to be replaced it's all in the back. Here's the rudder side and as you can see I have a uh, clip in there that I have uh, secured, I've used to secure the um, rudder uh, harness in place and again I won't overstress this but you need that uh, wrap to protect that servo uh, cable from chafing so I also found these uh, LED afterburners I believe these are 70 millimeters they're designed for EDFs but I just had them lying around and they happen to be the perfect diameter. I wanted to stick them inside, but uh, it would have been more complicated than I wanted to because I'd have to cut stuff through. But anyways, so I just stuck them on the outside and the reason the pipe is here is because I needed to figure out how that wiring is going to go. But check this stuff out. really quite slick. I'm pretty happy with uh, with what that looks like. But now all of my wiring harnesses have been uh, brought from the back to the front. You can see the elevator rudder wires there um, and you can see these other wires coming from the wing and the afterburner lights I just showed you you can see that harness protected under there um, through that heat resistant snake skin and then just coming all the way from the back through the side here and just snaked all the way to the front. I will be organizing these guys better. Um, I will just like figure out how to put a clip, a clip to hold everything. But everything has been uh, brought all the way to the front. Here's what we have and as you can see again, chafe protection, I'm gonna keep mentioning that. And my wires are all labeled. So I just gotta, uh, plug these guys in, uh, plug the, the gear and brakes in, uh, and plumb my batteries. I think the manual suggests batteries set up here, so I'm just going to do the wiring from up here to my smooth flight, from my smooth flight to my gear controller, and then add my receiver, and then we'll show you once this has been uh, cleaned out. Still working on the wiring up front, cleaning up uh, our work here. And you can see what I've done here is I've opened up uh, this top shelf and I've taken the shelf out. So here's the shelf. And what I did, the reason for opening here and here is because what I would like to do is have my batteries per the manual sitting on this rack. But I want everything to be, uh, to plug in to the top. So I opened the bottom of uh, this rack up as I've shown so that when these guys go in and sit, it's going to look like that. 
and this center hole is for the turbine battery and so my batteries are just going to plug in right to the top here uh, and you can see you have your um, uh, velcro strap notch here and there and so these are just going to get routed forward to underneath all of this and they're going to come through here and here and attach to the smooth flow so we've finally almost 99 percent uh, completed the wiring and you can see what that looks like here um, let's start at the tray so here's our tray for our batteries and you can see the two smooth flight batteries will plug in on here I've left a hole in the middle and that's where the Dean's connector is gonna go once I figure out the fuel system Here's one of the things I really like about the smooth flight system is that we have this uh, uh, key tag and key sort of system and this is how the plane gets turned on and off so if I pull this guy automatically all of my electronics will come on uh, we're talking about the uh, landing gear controller and what I want to show here is um, something a parameter that I figured out uh, is going to be super important uh, for anyone who might be trying to do this. So one of the things that happens with this gear is that it takes a while to go up and down. And so when I bought this controller, let's go into setup here and I'm going to show you. There is the second page, the motors tab. In here you have this parameter called max time. And I think stock, it was like something like 10 seconds or something like that. And what happened with that is that when I initially plugged in the retracts, they wouldn't go all the way. They would just stop halfway through. And usually what stops the retracts is the motor hitting the end, causing a, you know, a binding in the motor, which causes the amperage that is drawn by the motor to temporarily go up. And that's what this unload time here is. And when the retract sees that, it knows that the retract has either got to the end or the, uh, or the beginning, down or up. But there's a second parameter, which is kind of like another way to figure out, because you don't want your gear running for just a long time. If the motor is stripped or something like that, you will never get to the end of, of the stroke. And that's where this max time parameter comes in. So I just raise that to 15 seconds. I figure that out by basically actuating the gear and then figuring out a small buffer in terms of time just so that I'm always within that window and so for me that turned out to be about 15 seconds so in terms of the current that I'm using I'm using two and a half amps for both the gears in the mains and two and a half in the nose um, I will adjust these these are I, I don't know fairly high maybe but um, the gear and this plane are pretty large but that's basically just the setting that I wanted to 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 bring up Now, in terms of my antennas and my receivers, I've got two. So I'm using FreeSky, and these are tandem receivers. So I have 900 megahertz. You can see the antenna right there, and that is aligned longitudinally along the, the aircraft. You can see the 2.4 gigahertz again aligned that way. And if you go in here, we have our other antenna, orthogonal. This is a 2.4G antenna right there, orthogonal to the one that was just under here, so going up and down. So that's one set of antennas. The second set of antennas is all the way in the back. So you can see the receiver right there. And again, because the sharp edges on the wood, everything is chafe protected. So my antenna wires, and on this jet I'm using the extra long uh, 2.4 G antennas and you can see um, one set goes up this way and winds up positioned at this angle up here so just right underneath this edge so one antenna is up here and then the second antenna goes around and you can see that is right here so we have that orientation which is orthogonal almost to the orientation over here and then the 900 megahertz antenna is stuffed under here you can see that right there um, and that again is going left to right on the plane which is orthogonal to the one that was in the nose here we're 
is where we are today. Uh, we can see we have the elevators working, the rudders are working, the gear is working. Um, I can bring the gear up. You can see how slow that gear is going up. Um, should work though. Gear coming down. And so what's left at this point is the fuel system and CG. But so far, so good. Then obviously I'll be running tailorons on this jet. Here's a better angle, you can see the tailorons working and the rudder is working.